All right. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We are back. It is Tuesday, July 20th, and we are featuring our very own one and only Neil Murgai, who defies definition. It is so great to have you. It's truly a family affair tonight. Yes, I love it. Thank you for doing this with me <laughs> and taking the journey. I, I, you know, I had a journey of my own that was set to take off today, but I postponed it a day just so we could be together and do oh, this thing. Wow. I'm honored. Thank you. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it any other way. So just want to welcome all the regulars who come in week in and week out. And, um, what a fantastic, um, you know, kind of postish pandemic, you know, that we're still going on with these weekly virtual series. It's been really incredible. And, you know, Neil, I don't know, how many of our audience members here, how many of us know, but Neil is one of the um, driving forces behind curating all of these we this weekly programming. So thank you so much for holding it, holding it strong. Yes, labor um, of love. Yeah, yeah, it is a labor of love. So just a couple of uh, commercial announcements. Uh, we are streaming on YouTube and usually how we do things is I think Neil tonight is going to do a little bit of performing, a little bit of playing, and then we'll do a little bit of discussion. But if there's anything that you think of or you're curious about or you want to comment about, please do it in the chat on our YouTube screen. And I'm going ahead and act as facilitator and moderator. So I know most of the time we're a little slow to warm up, you know, because we're in the vibe. But definitely please uh, keep your questions and comments coming. It, it really helps to um, contribute to the conversation that Neil and I have. Um, also, please uh, share share the word, the Raga word, far and wide, brooklynragamassive.org. You can see a whole uh, strong listing, you know, through August for programs that we have coming up, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, but in the meantime, I think we'll go ahead and get started. So thanks everyone for being with us. Neil, anything you want to share before we get started? Yeah, well, it's great to be in the hot seat, David. And um, so this is something that I've been working on uh, in pandemic times, really, uh, honing in a live streaming setup with, um, I've been practicing looping uh, with various technologies over the years from like a Boss RC something pedal to this app called Loopy on an iPad. And then uh, Ableton graduated to Ableton in to pandemic times. And then I had kind of a vision for doing video with that. Um, and it's taken me also this whole time to really get it together and upgrade my gear and uh, use learn VDMX, which is a VJ software. And my vision was to uh, uh, to have lots of you know background videos and effects, but uh, also to create. Uh, video loops at the same time as I'm creating audio loops. So that's going to be a big part of what you're going to see and hear. And um, so maybe I'll just get started and then we'll talk some more about it in a little bit. Sounds good. Just going to adjust some stuff here, get comfortable. So I will be doing a bit of Rag Charukeshi, and um, we'll see where it takes us. Thank you. 
All right. How are we doing? Kiabat. Kiabat. Oh, man. So I told you, you know, for everyone here on the stream, we were, you know, at Soundcheck before the show. And after Neil, we did Soundcheck and we did a few minutes of drone music. I was just so tranced out and I was just saying what a task I had to have to moderate <laughs> after being like transported. Um, but I mean, listen, I think, you know, we were talking earlier about, you know, who would you want to go, you know, and explore the unexplored frontiers of, of the cosmic universe. And, you know, you are a selected cosmonaut, <laughs> Neil, on the journey for sure. Um, yeah, I think everything that you're doing is just so fantastic and it's it's so layered and what i'm really struck by is every single you know when we're listening to drone music and especially when it's improvisational and you're experimenting with different technologies and acoustic instruments sometimes when we're like when we are playing the music and we're in like a musician's perspective like when we're in the the performance but also as an audience it's just like when you introduce a new element or a new component it can kind of take you out of the landscape or the you know the the just like the dynamic that you're in the experience mm -hmm. that you're in and i find you know with the work that you're doing and the experimentation you're doing there's everything is it's nuanced but it all works it all the the flow is really not it's not interrupted and it, the layers really enhance each added layer enhances the previous layers and the previous um, amalgamation so just Thank wondering you. like right. do you have like a take on that like how you know if you want to just kind of put the technical brain in and how you want to analyze what you're doing or you just follow the music or is like there's technology and technique and 
concept that you're working with? Yeah, I guess it's a lot of both. I'm trying to be in the moment with it, but then I have some ideas of some scenes. Like I would say that's like one scene that I have. I'll show some other scenes later. And, um, but then, you know, in terms of fading out in and out different layers and kind of doing some movement that makes it a little more, you know, interesting and, uh, <clears throat> And trying to do that while, you know, and be musical and then be artful with the video and, you know, manipulating the technology is definitely a, a, a bit of a, a trick, but uh, it's been fun. It's really been a lot of fun to try and figure this out. It's so, it, it, it's, it's so patient and so present. You know, there's such a, a sense of presence and there's a sense of patience that is, um, even in the traditions that you're you know, you're culling from whether like it, whether it's the Indian classical repertoire or which has like a sense of patience too. But when you're in traditional, you know, sitar tabla performance of a lot of Georgiala, there's always like the expectation of the next section. And there's always like this, Yes. you know, even though when you're in the lap, you're present, but once the drums come in, you're, there's the anticipation, there's the expectation, but um, with each ad component, you know, like the fluent listener will come to expect and anticipate all these different parts that are kind of fren can be frenetic and energetic, yes. right? Does that make sense? Like what I'm saying? Definitely. So as, as the other pieces, of course, would be the, you know, the Raga elements and like Rag Charukeshi, you know, playing some elements of that and, and looping those together. And uh, as well, the, the like uh, the Jor you said a lot of jor is when we introduce the pulse so like in that particular one that was just a pulse and not necessarily any time signature it was kind of constantly changing up yeah and even in you know in you know electronic music even when it's done in kind of an improvisational setting with textures there's still like a a lot of times when we're listening to it there's like this frenetic energy because like there's all this like um there are all of these effects that have all these pulsations and it's like can be very frenetic and frantic, but I really feel your approach is really embodying and demands like a patience and a presence from all the technology that you're using. And I include the sitar in identifying sitar as technology, right. you know, it, yeah. it is very much a technology, right? So Many strings I gotta Yeah. <laughs> so um doing everything else. But yeah, it's, it's been um it's been a really fun journey to to become a cosmonaut this way and um and and to learn to manipulate this technology and to be artful with it so thank you i've been doing it with uh, some like classes in zoom like arts with working with arts horizons and brooklyn music school to do it in classes and for adults too teachers and family workshops kind of a sound meditation kind of experience mm. with this mm. and um and been building up to start a regular live stream. I, I might go on Twitch. Anybody out there has some good advice where should I should put my stream? I'll put it everywhere eventually. But uh, and I'm also going to be working with um, uh, in the future with Mil Nicole Biancasino, who is a theater director, and uh, so she's going to help me to maybe introduce more of a, a storyline and uh, still have some a lot of abstraction but kind of a, a through through way to make it bigger and yeah bigger. and I love the video component there is so much story you know subconscious all these different levels of consciousness storytelling like embedded in all these different whether like we're receiving it just orally through our ears or we're receiving your music both visually and orally or just visually and um can you tell us a little bit about the set? Like what's happening what behind you? What's the sculpture yeah, and work behind? Let me show you my, uh, my other cam. Hey, everybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we have this, uh, well, first of all, of course, there's this artwork back here from my wife, Seema Pandya, uh, former executive director for Brooklyn Raga Massive. And she took all these used tabla heads um, and made various sculptures out of it. Um, and of course, here, I've got this APC40, which is a controller that's made to work with Ableton Live. Um, and it's kind of like a mixer, but then all of these, all of these buttons here are add to raise different, add to basically vocal loops here. Basically vocal loops here. Basically vocal loops here. 
so I can have like a, a lot of vocal loops happening. And then I um, have the, you know, some of this is sent to do audio, but it's also sent to do video at the same time. So it's all kind of mixed up with what the controls are, are doing, whether it's audio or video here. And I've just got a simple Oxygen 8 little key MIDI keyboard here that I'm actually using as a foot pedal while I am playing sitar. I'll use it as a foot pedal to start and stop the loop. Mm. Very and, cool. And uh, I happen to have you have to use this uh, second computer actually because this Oxygen 8 is so old that my brand new iMac won't won't uh, understand it. <laughs> so then I uh, I have to use this other computer and I figured out how to create a MIDI network. That took me a week, but uh, I did it. I have a local MIDI <sighs> network sending the info so I can press a button here and start a loop and start a loop and then uh, yeah and then I've got the iPad here and uh, iPad really is just just controlling uh, some video elements just changing changing a couple of scenes back and forth and um, of course, some decent mics, two monitors, my trusty gong over here. What else? Maybe I'll show you, uh, just for a minute, I'll show you my, I'm going to share the screen here. So you see my setup here. This is the Ableton Live. Um, I've got lots, two, two like live tracks with the two mics. And then eight tracks of clip looping, which are the buttons uh, at the top of the, the Ableton hardware here. And then I've got a uh, looper. For anybody who's familiar with Ableton, I'm also using a looper on four different, four other tracks. Um, and then, of course, here is the VDMX. Uh, here I've got four potential <coughs> video loops <coughs> video loops four potential video loops the <coughs> audio loops video and loops. video loops are synced four <coughs> potential video, video loops. loops the audio loops and video loops are synced video loops Whoa. four potential <laughs> video loops the <coughs> audio you can drive yourself crazy like that <laughs> love that <laughs> And of course, here's the monitor of what's happening. Um, and then down here, we have like a media bin. So any kind of background videos, uh, which I'm going to get to in a little bit, uh, I can put over here and you know mix it in different ways. And it's very modular program. So everybody's setup is going to look completely different. And you just put in the little pieces that you need. Um, so it's been a learning curve. But I had a vision, and then I, I research that this is, you know, probably this program is probably the best way to achieve that vision. And then uh, here we are. Wow. So fantastic. Do you want to do uh, Oops. that's okay. Do you want to do some more playing or do you yeah. want to tune a little bit? Yeah, I'm going to tune up for a second. here. So while you're tuning, I just kind of want to encourage everybody who's here. If you have any questions, I know Neil just went over his tech setup and talked a little bit about kind of um, just a little bit more about conceptually about the work and the music. But if you have any questions specific, feel free to throw them in the chat. We'll get we'll get to everything. Um, I know it's hard to think of anything when you've been hypnotized for the past 20 minutes. So, um, yeah, but. There's no interruption. Don't feel as though you're interrupting. If you want to throw a question or a comment up there, it's really nice to to see everyone here and, and participating. Um, and then also, Neil, while you're doing that, we have a, a few really fantastic upcoming events. Uh, next week is Kaoru Watanabe, is um, our Tuesday weekly, a fantastic percussionist, flautist. Um, if you're around uh, next week, Tuesday, please spend some time with us. If you're not, definitely share the event with some friends. And then Brooklyn Raga Massive is partnering with Lincoln Center to present Raga Makam, which is our 
South Asian um, collaboration musically with uh, Makam. So it's Raga and Makam together. It's a really exciting collaboration that's been going on for a little while now. So if you haven't checked it out, definitely. Uh, that's July uh, 31st at Lincoln Center. And then after that, we have John McLaughlin and Mahavishnu being celebrated by the Brooklyn Raga Massive, and that's at the Culture Lab, Long Island City at the Plaxall Gallery. And then Brooklyn Raga Massive performs in D at the Shag Fest on Saturday, August 7th, 2021. Um, all of these events are on our webpage at www.brooklynragamassive.org slash events. Definitely come check it out, spend some time on our website and uh, yeah, spread the word. So I guess Neil, you might be just about ready, but yeah. again, um, if you know any friends and family who haven't yet checked out any of our offerings, please, they're free often, open to all. And yeah, or we, we'd love to see um, seasoned veterans, but we'd love to see new, new friends as well. Thanks, David. I am. Um, uh, you might know if you know some a bit about my music. I I, write, I do a lot of children's music. Uh, I have this group Raga Kids with Samir Gupta, Trina Basu. We started it together. And uh, anyway, I've written written a lot of songs, and this is a song I off would often play in my adult sets as well. Uh, First, there was the sound about the creation of the universe. Um, which is, yeah, we'll see a little bit of universe creation, I think. I do want to tell you about one thing over here because I'm going to shift over to this. I don't think we've seen this before, but um, this is another scene I've got going on here. It's basically audio reactive, and you can see that you can see that the higher frequencies kind of light up the smaller concentric circles there. So we're going to start over there and then take a journey beyond the universe. Thank you. 
what the sound was the sound first there 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 was the sound
right. Yeah, man. First there was the sound. First there was the sound. Oh man. You got it. Dude, you got it. <laughs> man. Can you talk to us a little bit more about your overtone? The overtone singing? Yeah, definitely. Um I've been practicing for uh would say about twenty years overtone singing and um you know, I just started to hear it in in my voice uh, in this uh, jam session, this band that I was playing with back in the day. And uh, it just so happened there was uh, this group from the Buryat Republic performing at La Mama around that time. They used to play every year uh, with the Yara, uh, Yara Arts Group. Um, and they, they, they gave some workshops in, in the overtone singing, and that kind of started me. And then I was working with uh, Timothy Hill, uh, studying from Timothy Hill, who is a great singer, overtone singer, and singer-songwriter, and uh, original member of the Harmonic Choir, um, which is a great group that kind of took some of the Tuvin uh, aspects of and Siberian musical techniques and then combined them with other European styles and using vowel sounds as well. So we can actually use the vowel sounds to go straight through the overtone series. Mm, like if, if we go oo, o, a, a, e. That's oo, o, a, a, e. It's like saying why really slowly. So it's like So you can see that as you know, the the concentric circles again are the higher pitches, right? And you can you can see and hear how that goes up. Let me do it again. Then the reverse will be. And the end of that is actually. And you can get four distinct clear overtones. So then when I started to combine that with uh, some looping, then, then my it was done. Then it's like your mind is blown. Um, then I've, oh, you can also do polyphonic overtone singing as well, uh, where you change the root note, and <coughs> and um, but you keep retain the same overtone uh, or y in many different ways. Basically, changing the root note and then doing lots of other things with the overtone. Let me just demonstrate changing the root note and keeping the overtone at say uh, the major third. So it's like. Mm, there's a third. So I'm going to sing one, two, three, three, two, one with the other, and by keep the overtone the third the whole time. You can see it's really lighting up that circle there. Um, and then, so that you can achieve different scales. minor scale there, um, or the, s the scale for this last piece that I'm going to do, um, kind of kind of, kind of 
like that. That's great. It's nice to have that. Um, it's great to be able to have that reference point, you know, just like the root of the overtone kind of put out there and use as a yes. reference. It'll, it'll be, it'll be a lot. It'll, it'll help guide the experience for the next piece to know kind of like where, what we're, what we're hearing, you know? Exactly. And you know, this has been a really great tool to help people learn, to help yourself learn, uh, um, to hear the overtones and to sing them as well. Basically, using um, uh, audio analysis software, right? So, and that's, that's what this is here. Um, that's what this is, but I just kind of made it into like a kaleidoscope, but it's really, it's really, you know, showing the waveforms and um, so you can visually see what, what it is, the, the notes. Yeah. Um, and it's super helpful. Yeah. Is there any questions in the uh, YouTube? You know, I know there was a little technical difficulties. I don't know if, if there's something we, people miss seeing that. Um, well, we just had a, a couple of technical difficulty just with, um, you know, featuring our screens, but it was just for a few seconds. It wasn't anything. And then mostly like the more specific question was mandolin, just wanting to know more about the specifics of the overtones approach and and the content that you were using with your overtones otherwise it's just been alkylades <laughs> and everyone just like really loving the vibe and and loving the music and right. love everything that's happening you know it's just a cosmic it's just a cosmic experience you know <laughs> <laughs> that's what, that's what we like to hear um, <laughs> So about the overtones, I could say a little bit more. I mean, the overtone series, of course, is a fundamental constant in nature, you know, that, that kind of affects all waveforms, right? And uh, we hear a musical note. We hear that as a G. But there's actually many, many frequencies above it that exist in a strict mathematical relationship to the frequency of the fundamental which we measure in hertz right the beats per second um and uh or frequ uh, cycles per second right and so like the 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 first overtone is that fundamental the second overtone uh the second harmonic rather would be then the, an octave above that. Then it goes a fifth, and then uh, the the octave again, major third. I, I can demonstrate. So, So those overtones are in a strict scale um, that goes a little bit out of what we think of as musical tones. But our musical tones really derive from that because we have this mathematical thing that's built into all our voices and all our instruments. It's always there. Actually, all singing is overtone singing. Um, uh, it's j overtone singing is actually more about dampening certain notes to let others, <laughs> to let the main ones you want to ring out. And then, so, so then uh, my use, the question was about the usage of the overtones. Yeah, when I started to experiment with looping, then, um, you know, stacking chords, I experimented a lot with stacking chords and, uh, you know, having uh, different fundamentals, but the shared overtone and creating these pads like that and maybe shifting through uh, some chords, uh, chord changes even like one six two five kind of thing but really slowly so it's like a pop song that's really slowed down and then as i got into ableton i've been introducing the sitar back into it um into the looping because for a while i was just doing it with the with the overtone singing and which allows me to add more raga elements and uh, the percussion as well and um shall i do one more yeah, you should. And there's like a question about quarter tones. And I'm just like wondering, just to help put a little context into the question or the comment, really, it's just 
we're, I mean, yeah, we're thinking about, you know, tonic, dominant, subdominance. We're talking about different, de- going through these different degree scales through this, actually the glissando of the overtone. But are we, and of course, like as you go, just like as you're gliding through the frequency through this overtone vehicle, this mechanism, you're not thinking though in quarter tone, you're not thinking of quarter tones in, in that nature. You're not mathematically breaking it down like that, are you? You're not thinking about that, are you? I mean, I know I know where the, you know, what the note is, right? The right. Is, but it's a fixed, it's fixed in nature. It's not going to, it's an exact thing, an exact ratio. But of course, you could introduce quarter tones by changing the the root note in different ways too, and then get get more quarter tones that way. Right. But as you get into the higher harmonics, there are like a lot more quarter tones, and and you know, way more subdivisions of that as you get beyond into the, you know, thirteen, eleventh, uh, twelfth, thirteenth harmonic, and then above that, above the sixteenth as well. It's like that's kind of insane. Um, but uh, you don't, re- you really just, I'm using just some kind of the, the first to the 12 or, or 15. Okay. Or something like that. Makes so sense. Just, yeah. So what do you think you're going to play next? Do you have an idea? Or are you inspired? Yeah, I thought I would do mostly an overtone thing. Um, kind of reference a little Rag Bairagi, maybe kind of between Bairagi and, uh, and uh, Bairav. Um, I think we can get with that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, so kind of more improv, really. Um, yeah. And I'm going to use uh, feature some artwork from my wife, like an animation that she did uh, of one of her other tabla art pieces. Nice. I love a collaboration. I love it. Yes. Yes. We'd love to collaborate and uh, hopefully more of that coming soon. Oh. All right. Check a tune in here. Do it. Just want to thank everyone again for joining us. And again, share the good news, spread the good news that plenty of fantastic Brooklyn Raga Massive events coming up and concerts. So check out our website at brooklynragamassive.org. And um, yeah, as we kind of open things up to in person, remember it's important to stay safe while you do so. And it's also completely okay to um, not go out and (laughs) see live music indoors if you're not comfortable, that really is okay. I just wanna give everybody permission to kind of maintain a sense of self-care that feels good for you. Um, You could spend days just watching the videos of this weekly series that we've done now, I don't know, 60 of them. It was, we were doing two a week at one point. So it, like yeah. 70 or 80 of these. Things. I think we've reached over 30,000 viewers in all in our last the 14 to 16 months of programming. And um, it's been fantastic. Yes. Good morning, Sajil. Good morning from India. It's nice to see you. You just made it. We're going to do a little bit more music before we wrap things up. But thanks for joining us. And Again, please stay safe, take care of yourself, take care of one another. Um, And again, I wanna thank you, Neil. I know we have a little bit more to go, but just wanna thank you for sharing. Now, it's one thing just to share and perform, but another thing to add so much insight and to share, you know, your your process and your tools. And um, that, that is like another level of sharing. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. And if anybody has any other kind of questions, please, you know, I can, I'll check the chat. Also get get in touch with me through my website neilmagai.com. You can actually uh, also <coughs> purchase my CD, which has a mix of the solo overtone singing looping tracks, as well as works with my ensemble Neil Magai Ensemble uh, compositions of mine with violin, cello, and tab- sitar and tabla. And uh, so we're gonna take it out like this. So this is kind of loosely based on a track that's on the album.
Wow, Neil. Thank you so much for such a fantastic evening of music and sharing. Uh. Thank you. Thank you for being here with me, David, and uh, Diego behind, behind the scenes doing the stream, and all of you who tuned in. Please share the video if you liked it. Of course, if again, it's going to be archived right at the same location. And um, we think we still got a gong going on there. Yeah, th and we have, you know, this is definitely an international convening, UK, India, Laos, United States. We have a whole, a whole global gathering. So I just want to, again, thank you so much, Neil. Thank you, Diego Malins. We couldn't do it without him. And uh, thank everybody for coming and hanging out. Please be in touch and reach out to Neil via his website, neilmargai.com. You can find out more about the upcoming events from Brooklyn Raga Massive at www.brooklynragamassive.org. Um, yeah, we love to hear from you. Um, no hello is too, too big or too small. Please uh, stay in touch. Let us know um, how you're doing out there in the world. And until next time, um, stay safe, be well, everyone, and have a good night. Thanks again, Neil. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. <laughs>